this is Erica with Launching Legacies. Welcome to our daily devotional. Today we are looking at the prophet Isaiah and applications from this book of the Bible and this prophet's work. So let's begin. Isaiah means Yahweh is salvation. And um, that's a beautiful name because that's kind of what the under line message of the book of Isaiah is all of his prophecies are going to lead back to Christ and um, his prophecies are quite extensive. Isaiah is the longest book of prophecy um, and it is 66 book uh, 66 chapters which is interesting because you can't forget it because 66 books in the Bible 66 books and 66 chapters in Isaiah. So that's something to remember. Remember that um, I Isaiah is a major prophet. He is probably the one of the more profound of the major prophets because um, of the extensiveness of his prophecy. He prophesies from the time that he's speaking all the way into the end of days. He prophesies uh, tremendously about Christ and his prophecies are extremely extensive. Before he's used, though, there is an exchange between him and um and the angels that have called him are really him and God, in which he says that he's unworthy because he knows that he's around people who who are unworthy, and so he's like, I I can't be I can't be the one to send deliver your message. I'm not worthy, you know. Like I'm a I'm a person with a bad mouth because I've been around people with bad mouths. Like this is just kind of what it is, uh, and that's in a nutshell, kind of paraphrase. But he basically is like, no, I know who I am. I know who I've been around. Like I can't be used this way. And then there's a um, the angel uses a, a coal to to purify uh, his mouth so that he can do the work that God has called him to do. There's even an application in that, and I want to talk about that really quickly. There, there for some of us, we've come from places that are not um, always glorious or beautiful or what we would call Christ honoring in our past. And that, that's okay um, because God is he who makes us well. If we are committed to doing what he's called us to do, he will purify us. He will sanctify us. He will bring us into the place in which we can do the work that he's called us to do. So we should never be ashamed of our past, but we should always be able to be willing to glorify God with, with whatever it is that he's asked us to do. And then he will make our path straight, right? He will create in us the clean heart. He will, he will do that work. And so definitely this is what happens with um, Isaiah. His mouth is purified so that he can do the work that God has called him to do. And, and he does. Once he's purified, his tone changes completely. He's like, send me, I'm ready. I'm let's, let's go. Um, and he does gung ho full force. He is no holes barred preaching the gospel like Isaiah is about that okay um he is one of um I told you Jeremiah was one of my favorites Isaiah is another one of my favorites and it's just because of how intricate and detailed the book of Isaiah is really he just spans every every place is a lot of grace in the book of Isaiah a lot of talking about how man doesn't understand grace and and what God is offering and I'll just show you um, from this Bible is every Bible I have I have marked up but this one how extensively it's been marked up like literally every verse everything is marked up my margins are all marked up um and it's all through the whole book of isaiah because it's that extensive um the things that he's saying that detail all these little nuggets in here so i'm definitely going to recommend that you read the book of isaiah as i recommend for every book um i read isaiah this time that the most of these markings come from there's two different colors so i know it's two different times that i marked um so that i read through and extensively like looked at scripture by scripture line by line um when i did the first two studies of isaiah from this bible and i have it in another bible as a study i used a companion and the reason why is because it can be kind of difficult uh if you're not really well versed with the book of isaiah to determine exactly what he's referencing what he's talking about so i would suggest a companion um, I didn't prepare them, so I'm not going to try to look on my shelf to, to show you whichever ones I used. Um, but there are many companions out there. Blue Letter Bible 
Bible is really good. Their resources that are on Blue Letter Bible are really excellent. So that's all I'm going to say about uh, reading through the book of Isaiah as far as you studying it. It's extensive. You want to be able to study with a companion or do it as a Bible study possibly because it's an extensive book of the Bible. Very uh, beautiful words and eloquence. I don't know if I told you when it was written, 700 to 650 BC. So again, we're going back in time. And um, here goes a pretty good breakdown for the book of Isaiah. So God's purpose um, will stand against all earthly forces. That's one of the major themes. And then that God promises salvation. And because he promises it, then of course he's going to provide it. And so uh, Isaiah prophesies about the fulfillment of this salvation through Christ Jesus. And then it, he talks about how salvation will be available to all. Those are the major themes in the book of Isaiah. And his prophecies go from local prophecies extended towards specific prophecies prophecy about Hezekiah's reign and then after Hezekiah the coming Messiah and after the coming Messiah the Messiah's available and availability and access to all people and that's kind of the progression for the the book of Isaiah um, again strongly encourage that you read it not a lot that I can say uh, over this devotional about it just because it's that extensive like I wouldn't be able to do it justice but remember the first application that I said the Lord sanctified Isaiah so that he can do it because really it was he he, I mean, God called him, so he was he was able to do it. But Isaiah felt in the presence of God, like, wait a minute, I'm not good enough to do this work. And so God sanctifies or purifies him in order for him to go ahead and do the work. And then we see the theme of grace kind of emerge and be really, really solid through the entire book of Isaiah, despite the prophecies are really, really direct. Like, you have to be prepared. Isaiah prophesies really straightforward Um about all the things that people are doing that God's like, you know, he's just not going to take this forever. Basically, he's just not going to take this forever. He's just not going to stand for your bad behavior forever. This is just not tolerable. We really need to be thinking about what we could do better, what we should be doing differently. How can we honor God? Like he's, he's very direct in that. And then, um, and, and very specific at times. And then he goes off and says, but you know what? There is a savior that's coming, a Messiah. Really, he's explaining the need for it because he's like, he can't tolerate this behavior forever there has to be a plan in place to make this well because this is not you know what what's going on is not okay and so then the plan is jesus the christ the son of the living god and when we get to the 50s we really see a lot of prophetic uh scriptures about christ so if you want to specifically hone in there let me give you those passages of scripture the coming messiah is uh, actually 40 through 56 is what I have marked down. So 40 through 56 is about the Messiah, the coming Messiah, okay? And there's actually description of Christ. Many people uh, don't know that. In 52, 53, actually 53, 54, um, in that area, you can look for the description, the physical description of Christ is, is uh, described there. His character is described also through this passage from 40 to 56. And then the Messiah for all people, his access and availability ends the entire book from 57 to 66 uh, as far as the chapters are concerned. Well, I wish that um, I was more, it was more exciting because it seems very scholarly what we just talked about. And that's because Isaiah really should be taken with a, a great amount of attention and uh, to details because he's very specific and very detailed throughout the chapter in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah also represents the last of the prophets that we will be discussing through this application. But I want you to remember, this is the thing. Nobody is putting uh, uh, the wool over God's eyes. God knows who he is. He knows who he created. He knows how people are and what they're prone to do. And he's giving us, and we have got to remember that because that's one of the messages of Isaiah. He's been giving the world, all of creation, an opportunity to do things better, to do things right. And, and creation has not necessarily responded positively. We haven't really been forthcoming to say, oh God, yeah, I know we're doing the wrong thing. Let, let's all get right and do the right thing. But from Isaiah to now, we can say that God is still like, okay, 
this is not, you're going to be doing this, but you won't be doing it forever. And the beauty of it is that Isaiah prophesied about a king that was coming, about a Messiah that would, would come. We know that the Messiah has come and that he will come again. And so when we look at the application of Isaiah, for one, it's the completion, like God has done what he said he would do. And then the part that has not been fulfilled, which is for eternity, the end, the, the final judgment or the end days, the day of the Lord, those days haven't come yet, but we know that what everything he said up until the point uh, that we've lived at this point has happened. So we can trust the completion and the fulfillment of what God has said. But how do we rectify then how far away from God the world has become and it has grown to be? And then how do we get closer to God? Because God is calling us back like he was with Isaiah. He's calling us back even today. And so would you pray um, if as you read the book of Isaiah, would you pray for this world? Would you pray for the people of, that God has created that we would get back into the intimacy, the love of our creator? Because that's what we're missing. And that's what Isaiah was talking about. God's not going to let this stand forever, but he has given us a Messiah. He's given us salvation and salvation indeed is for everyone. So God bless you. We're done with Isaiah. We're done with the major prophets. I'll do a follow-up tomorrow just because it's Friday and why not end the week with a, a synopsis of uh, maybe understanding Old Testament prophecy in general. But um, until then, I will see you. We pray that you are blessed and we know that we are, you, I hope that you know that we're praying for you and we hope that you're praying for us. Okay, until tomorrow, be blessed. <music>